Dear friends in Christ, welcome to the special Maundy Thursday celebration from St. Paul's Church, Port Alfred. In our email invitation to the service, you have been invited to partake in the washing of the feet at home. You will be given time to do so during the playing of the hymn and new commandment. Do remember that this service ends without a conclusion with the reading of Psalm 22. The altar will be stripped after the end of this service. May our Lord bless us with his presence as we partake in this solemn service today. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In the following moment of silence, let us remember those things that interfere and keep us from that perfect relationship with our living God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, your Son revealed his love by giving us this supper to celebrate the new and eternal sacrifice. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, reading from verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, The month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, 
they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked around your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I read from verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news as it is proclaimed in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. The devil had already put into, his, into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During the supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, 
You do not know what I am going to do now, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share of me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash. You are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table. And he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet. So you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Dear friends, today is Maundy Thursday, also known as Holy Thursday, Covenant Thursday, Sheer Thursday, or the Thursday of the Mysteries, a day in which we as Christians commemorate the Last Supper. Where does the name Maundy Thursday come from? Most Christians from other mainline denominations simply call today Holy Thursday or the fifth day of the Holy Week. The word Maundy is particularly used in the Anglican Church and is derived from the Latin word mandatum, meaning a new covenant, a new mandate. Tonight we are asked to reflect on the mysteries of the Passover, the breaking of the bread, and then also the washing of the feet and its meaning. But let's start with our reading from the Old Testament. The final of the ten plagues is the death of the firstborn, a final judgment on Egypt for executing the Israelite babies in Exodus. As the Israelites leave Egypt, God gives them two commemorative rituals, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread and the Passover, so that they will always remember their deliverance out of Egypt. For the Israelites to be spared from the tenth plague, a lamb with no defects had to be slaughtered and its blood placed on the door frames of each home. The lamb was a sacrifice, a substitute for the person who would have died in the plague. From this point, the Hebrew people would clearly understand that for them to be spared from death, an innocent life had to be sacrificed. The Hebrews followed God's instruction. That night, the firstborn son of every family who did not have blood on the, their door frames died. Inside their homes, the Israelites ate a meal of roast lamb, bitter herbs, and bread made without yeast. Bitter herbs signifying the bitterness of their slavery in Egypt. We turn to our New Testament reading. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, we read, The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. 
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The sacrament of Holy Communion is an act of love and delivery. Jesus certainly wanted us to remember him in tangible elements, everyday things like bread and wine. These symbols have been a beautiful sacrament for Christians of all time also teaching us to share what we have. His message of justice and liberation outraged the leaders of his time. His death was imminent. He would have captured, would have been captured and crucified. Perhaps the dinner was a solemn ceremony and all eyes were fixed on him while he broke the bread and blessed wine. Also, it could be that there were sweet words of farewell, tears and smiles as they shared the final farewell. It is essential that this moment was a sharing between the Master and his disciples. The communion as a marum is a reminder of the sacrifice of Jesus and it does not exclude and it does not discriminate. It is an invitation to connect with Jesus and our faith communities. That is why in this passage there are no requirements for who could share the meal. Let us recall that even Judas Iscariot was part of this moment. We must remember that this is the Jesus who said, Come to me ye who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus' arms are always open to receive us. In our church, we have the gift of sharing communion from a table that is open to all. It is beautiful to see everyone who love and seek Jesus share in the elements of bread and wine. Human beings sometimes attempt to set limitations and regulations on the teachings of Jesus regarding communion. The truth is that God's love is more immense, more extensive than what the human mind can comprehend or imagine. The communion table was instituted by Jesus to show his love, to fully receive in communion his beloved community. Jesus' table is open to all who desire the gift of faith, his message of love, his call to justice. Just as the Jews celebrate the Passover to commemorate deliverance from slavery, we who believe in Jesus Christ as the Saviour of humankind commemorate our deliverance from slavery of sin every time we take part in and celebrate the Lord's Supper. In the same way in which the blood of an innocent lamb had to flow in order for the angel of death to pass over the firstborns of the Hebrew nation, the blood of the Lamb of God had to flow to free us from the slavery of sin. We break bread in thankfulness, for we are set free by the blood of the Lamb. The Gospel reading calls into question what we are to do with this wonderful freedom. What did Jesus do? In John 13 verse 4 it is written, Jesus got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with Tell. Washing guests' feet was the task of a household servant. Jesus wrapped a towel around his waist, as the lowliest servant would do, and washed and dried his disciples' feet. Once again, as on Palm Sunday, we are reminded to be humble people. Imagine being Peter and watching Jesus watch, wash the other's feet all the while moving closer to you. Seeing his master behaving in this way confused Peter. 
He did not want Jesus to wash his feet. He still did not understand what Jesus was trying to say. The one who follows Jesus is called to be a servant. I conclude. I once heard an American author say that the Statue of Liberty on the west coast of the United States needs to be balanced on the east coast by a statue of responsibility. And I would like to add humility. This goes for every country in the world. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. We are free, but freedom is empty, means nothing without responsibility and humility. Jesus did not wash his disciples' feet to get them to be nice to one another. His goal was far greater. They were to move into the world as servants. In Matthew 20, 26, Jesus speaking to his disciples about those in authority says, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. These men, Jesus' disciples, were to move into the world, serving God, serving each other. This is our mandate for Morning Thursday. A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Let us pray. Holy God, source and sovereign, you put all power and authority into the hands of Christ. Christ who washes our feet in humble service. Teach us to love one another as Christ has loved us, so that everyone will know that we are his disciples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Friends, during the next few minutes, time is given to meditate on Jesus' message of love and servanthood. Or, should you wish, to take part in the washing of the feet in your own home.
Let us pray. On the solemn evening, in union with Christ's prayer that all may be one, as he and the Father are one, we pray for the unity of all Christians. Father, we pray for Christians throughout the world that we may be one. We pray for the Roman Catholic Church and for Francis the Pope that we may be one. We pray for the Eastern Orthodox Churches and for the Patriarchs and Archbishops that we may be one. We pray for the churches which have covenanted with us and for their leaders that we may be one. We pray for all other churches, that we may be one. We pray for the Anglican Communion, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, that we may be one. We pray for the Church of the Province of Southern Africa, and for Tarbo, our Metropolitan, that we may be one. We pray for this diocese and for Ebenezer, our bishop, that we may be one. We pray for this parish and for Jacques, our rector, that we may be one. We pray for the unity of all Christian people, that the world may believe that we may be one. Heavenly Father, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, said to his Apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, regard not our sins, but the faith of your Church, and grant you that peace and unity which is according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. A new commandment I give unto you, love one another as I have loved you, so that so must you love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Anglican tradition has a wonderful practice that can be used by those who are unable to physically receive the bread and wine. It is called the spiritual communion. The prayer book says that we can be certain that Christ comes to us in this way as surely as he does at the sacrament. For those Anglicans who are following in the Anglican prayer book, we may follow this on page 516 in the Anglican prayer book of 1989. Jesus, may all that is you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been forgiven. May the shelter I seek in the shadow of your cross, let me not run from the love which you offer, but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until that day comes when with your saints I may praise you forever. Amen.
we end this morning Thursday service with a reading of Psalm 22. And for those of you who have an Anglican prayer book with you, this psalm is on page 628. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry to you by day, but you do not answer, and by night also I take no rest. But you continue holy, you that are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and they were saved. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, the scorn of men and despised by the people. All those that see me laugh, they laugh at me. They shoot me out their lips, they shoot out their lips at me and wag their heads saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But you are he that took me out of the womb that brought me to lie at peace on my mother's breast. On you have I been cast since my birth. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. O go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help. Many oxen surround me, fat bulls from Bashan close me in on every side. They gape wide their mouths at me, like lions that roar and rend. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is like melting wax. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue clings to my gums. My hands and my feet are withered, and you lay me in the dust of earth. For many dogs are come about me, and a band of evildoers hem me in. I can count all my bones. They stand staring and gazing upon me. They part my garments among them, and cast lots for my clothing. O Lord, do not stand far off. You are my helper. Hasten to my aid. Deliver my body from the sword, my life from the power of the dogs. O oh, save me from the lion's mouth, and my afflicted soul from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation I will praise you. O oh, praise the Lord, all you that fear him. Hold him in honour, O oh, seed of Jacob, and let the seed of Israel stand in awe of him. For he is not despised nor abhorred the poor man in his misery, nor did he hide his face from him, but heard him when he cried. From you springs my praise in the great congregation. I will pay my vows in the sight of all that fear you. The meek shall eat of the sacrifice and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May their hearts rejoice forever. Let all the ends of the earth remember and turn to the Lord. And let all the families of the nations worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he shall be ruler over the nations. How can those who weep in the earth do him homage, 
or those that descend to the dust bow down before him. But he has saved my life for himself, and my posterity shall, shall serve him. This shall be told of my Lord to future generations, and his righteousness declared to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. <clears throat> 